Hi, and welcome back to another magnificent fluff piece. Uh, this is at WCCC, as always, and uh, we are having a good one here. The past two weeks have seen uh, an interesting rise in updates for MachineCraft. Uh, and I am not going to absolutely soft coat the topic here. Um, oh, sugar coat topic, softball, whatever. Jeez, I'm amazing at throwing two relevant words together for no reason other than my own forgetfulness. Anyways, uh, let's go over some of the changes that I haven't made in recent weeks. If And I'm recalling mostly from memory here. Uh, they broke tires, unbroke tires, uh, added an interesting new feature where if there is a colliding or a collision and visual having part uh, connected to the core through an invisible non-colliding part, uh, it will risk on a rare, air quotes, occasion um, to blow up the invisible connector. Uh, and uh, this is pretty weird when you consider that rare chance is complete and utter garbage in combat because most people use, I don't know, machine guns, rapid fire cannons, a high volume of fire to kill things to death because, you know, the game by default plays relatively slow and shots needed to kill. Uh, and this update has been fantastic. Uh, there is currently uh, a, a couple ways to, um, I guess, uh, bridge compatibility with old bots. I, I might go over that another time. I'm not going to go over that here. But basically, what the fuck? Uh, and I know that is profane and out of a left field here, but why? So well, let's go over the potentials of having invisible collisionless bodies connecting multiple parts. For instance, on my Macs, I tend to have a fantastic little tidbit here. Um, and one of the things that I'll end up doing uh, is that it'll allow me to blow off torso without blowing off the arms. It's going to just take me a few hours here to do this. There we go. Torso, but still having arms. And, uh, yeah. Uh, that allows for things to be built in a certain way, um, to where limb destruction does not necessarily occur in a certain order. I wouldn't necessarily call this an exploit. Um, it's not an exploitation of a feature that doesn't work as intended. It's not an exploit of mechanics or anything. It's just building things in a very clever, uh, very complex structure that, by the way, increases the machine cost considerably, in case you didn't know, uh, so the parts cave less. There is a trade-off for this. They have increased cost on the machine. And ultimately, it's not really even that overpowered. Normally, you would aim for where things do the most shooting on a bot to take it out of mission quickest. So you'd aim for the arms, and you'd blow off an arm to remove its ability to fight with that arm. And then with this loss of edge and firepower, you continue to increase your uh, pressure on it, take off its other weapons until it is defenseless or dead, and that's how combat flows. Having the ability to bypass having the usually pretty inert torso, even if you mount guns on the thing, it's still not anywhere as good as actually having arms. So this wasn't necessarily a problem, like... So there's no major glaring issue that's going to radically change the way you're already fighting something and increases the cost on the machine to do so. But let's go over some other applications that are a little less ethically questionable. I, I, I would consider, even though they are not an exploit, skeletal systems can be considered ethically questionable. You are negating the destruction of parts in a conventional manner by using very clever build methods. It's, it, it's a little weird, and it's most certainly breaking the norms. Um... All right, so continuing here as to what the heck is going on. Uh, great example, if you notice the hammerhead. I'm going to F9 here and just break this sucker. Oh, yeah, actually, all the parts are currently frozen on F9, so I can't really show this all too well. But let's go set my guns to shock cannon. No, that's not even displaying. Yeah, so if you notice right here on the right side of my screen, I'm firing my right gun, and it's jostling around. Why is it doing that? It's actually not from the recoil uh, in a conventional sense. It's from the system I use to reduce recoil. Between, so the hammerhead has a shoulder, and the shoulder mounts the turret-like arm. The arm aims up and down, the waist aims left to right. That's part of what it does. Now, something that is very much of note is that uh, you can get a lot of interesting issues with knockback or recoil on very large size or very high heel bots that are taking punishment or dealing punishment. 
And the reason for that is the wider your bot is, the more the size acts as a lever and adds mechanical advantage to veering the waist off center. This creates a balance issue that can be exploited by recoil or knockback from incoming fire. I've noticed this on many of my bots in the past, and I've invented what I call Newtonian shock absorbers uh, to deal with it. So the shoulder moves on a rotator to up, aim up, down. Now, mounting that rotator to the body is actually a spring, and the spring is very precisely mounted to moderately reduce automatic fire's recoil and greatly reduce um, armor piercing gun's recoil. And now that this patch exists, keep in mind that for every that if I have two arms, I have added probably bare minimum 200 machine cost to add these springs to my arms. And once again, there is a trade-off for that. But here we are again. We're sitting down, and now my arms would be blowing up normally under casual circumstances. And there's not really an exact clear reason why. Uh, they just kind of combust, because screw it, why not? So what are the implications of this? We've negated one potential manner of relatively negligible exploit. I mean, if you really even want to call it an exploit, it's... Uh, what's we'll just call it an exploit? Fuck it, I don't care. And we have negated one technological method. And if you count any of my transforming bots, such as the Helios, or any of my uh, other bots that do very complex things, that also limits the complexity on them. Because now, when they have a waist on the Helios that is able to fold 90 degrees in pitch to turn into an airplane, uh, like mech mode. Now that is two moving parts with a collisionless body in between. So now the entire torso will get blown off randomly. Now, like I said, I've already fixed the bots, but the implications of this are pretty damn clear. This will send technology practically back to the Stone Age, because every time you want to add a part, you have to either add a visible part in between, or you have to reduce the complexity of the parts, reducing the amount of freedom you have when building your goddamn bot. Why? Just why? So let's go with some other changes, and these are controversial and I have varying opinions on them. A lot of people hate the idea of cost in battle. I'm okay with cost. Cost makes it so a large machine isn't the end all in machines. If some, someone shows up with a big Bertha MK2 and it dies once, it could blow out a massive chunk of your team HP. So the person who brought a massive big Bertha is a huge detriment to their team. But on the plus side, if that big old machine worked out as intended, that cost would be relative to a high-performing machine. Presumably, that person will learn not to bring giant, clumsy, high-cost machines if they are not effective. That's perfectly fine. Yes, their team might get a little salty, but if you're playing to win and you're not playing to have fun, you already have a fundamental problem. Some other changes that they have made is uh, they have changed the speed limit, previously from 100 to 5,000 and how it scales HP. This is a very controversial change. But I support it because it reinforces the idea of trade-offs. And even in higher energy conditions where you can do a lot of stupid things with very big machines, it encourages you to think wisely. And that had all sorts of back and forth breaks and fixes, breaks and fixes, and now it's pretty stable. If you ask me, 100 was a little questionable. 100 gave so much HP factor, in fact, without increasing the machine cost in any conceivable way, here comes the problem, uh, that you could have a very dirt simple strangely tough bot that wouldn't even move in high speeds. And arguably, not moving high speeds means they can't defend the objective or anything else in, say, team battle. But overall, the potency in combat is ridiculous in stems from essentially nothing. They changed the speed limit floor to 200. I actually think this is a good move. I think 100 is too slow for combat terms anyways, and 100's HP bonus is arguably too far. Now, they've also nerfed the cap, or the ceiling, to 2,000 instead of 5,000. This is a massive whiplash, and you can still use other methods to increase your speed limit past 2,000, I think, still. I think 2,000 is basically unlimited still, but it penalizes you less for doing so? I'm not entirely sure. I don't build bots that go X thousand kilometers an hour because they have almost no combat application. Either you're moving very fast in certain bursts, or that's about it. And this patch also made it so you cannot exceed twice your speed limit when using afterburners. In the case of the hammerhead, the hammerhead maxes out at about 300, so its afterburners cannot exceed about 600 or so. And to be honest, it really can't. And that, that's fine, that's fair. But then I think they made another change. Uh, so this is another change that is drawing a lot of ire out of nowhere. Uh, if you know anything about a community, people have always hated the mover part. 
Uh, not necessarily beginners. Beginners love the damn thing, and people who can't build walkers properly love the damn thing as well. And building walkers, to be fair, is an incredibly hard process, and they do allow you, I believe it's either one or maybe even two movers as the minimum, uh, or the maximum allowed while you can still get a walker recharge bonus. This actually makes sense. Now, the mover gives the uh, effect that is essentially a combination of a gyroscope, depending on whether or not you place it in a certain orientation to the core. It has a uh, movement feature that is not unlike thrusters, and it has a hover feature that is not unlike anti-gravity devices. However, movers have no input actions, basically at all. Uh, you can do hover SW, which is this horrible hack the developers have put in, to where you can turn on and off your movers, but... Oh, it's 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 just so bad. Um, the fact that movers can't be controlled as dynamically is as if you had tossed together AGDs and thrusters. Kind of gives AGDs and thrusters an edge. They're probably more expensive at day's end, and they may consume slightly more energy, but the amount of control and the amount of things you can do with that freedom are indeed staggering, and I would consider that well to be worth it. I have never, during any major section of any of my building, or I think maybe one bot I've, Maybe two bots I've ever made, and I've made hundreds of bots, keep in mind, um, have ever used movers as a means of actual movement or even stabilization. I haven't used them for stabilization more than those two times either. So I, I don't like movers, but they've applied various patches that seem to limit how much heavy hold mover-based objects are going in speed relative to their heavy hold. And now, as of today, they have hit it with another debuff, so the more heavy hole you have, the more the speed limit is impacted. The hammerhead basically isn't impacted by these changes. Because why? Uh, it's heavy hold, but it uses thrusters. So the bot was arguably already better, although for more cost, and now it's basically just plain better. Why? Th this was not necessary. I don't know what the hell they were thinking. So, I mean, I know this isn't exactly constructive criticism. I am breaking it down logically. But the way I'm putting it is blunt enough to possibly be considered deconstructive criticism. And that's fine, because I, I want to have a constructive silver lining here. So we talked about, are our movers overpowered? Well, no. Uh, when movers tend to be overpowered, it tends to be on small bots that use them in place of AGD and thrusters, and use them to move very sharply, very fast, and be very small. The problem here actually isn't the movers. At all. The problem is that the bot is so incredibly goddamn small. That while it will be statistically potent in most energies, when you get into higher energies, they are higher statistical potency than they really should be relative to their size. And that's kind of one of the dangers of doing high spec, or dare I even say unlimited. Unlimited quality of combat hardly even matters. It's who slaps on the most goddamn function parts. Uh, and uh, yeah, that's just kind of its own little uh, diddly. So if there's already kind of a problem where the net code causes latency that makes small machines hard to hit, even if you're hitting them on your own client perfectly fine with good aiming systems, then you kind of have a problem with how clean the latency is. It's the netcode can't support machines that goddamn small and expect accurate combat results. The problem isn't the movers. I hate movers, and I admit, the movers have nothing to do with it. <laughs> like, holy heck, this is absurd. And if we go on to why they're debuffing heavy hole with movers, this I really don't understand. Yes, it allows them to make a smaller bot, sure, and it allows them to uh, exaggerate the issue with latency. But the problem is the latency at some point. Even if you make it light hold, someone's going to find a combination somewhere that's able to be combat small relative to dimensions and still have enough firepower to be a menace and hard to hit for its size due to the crappy netcode. So what the hell is going on? Well, um, I don't know really. Because here's another problem. Even if you blame the heavy hole, even if you blame having that much stat density for your size while still getting to move around agile, that's not the fault of the mover. Anytime you add heavy hole, you are getting, I believe, either 2.5 or 3 times, depending on what the latest patch is. I, I, I haven't checked on this number in eons. Uh, the energy capacity for 10 times the weight. So, if you have any manner of logic or building experience, you know exactly where the, my statement is going. If you are spending 10 times the energy to move 10 times the mass, but you're getting 3 times the energy capacity, by making yourself heavy, you are overall losing out in terms of movement efficiency. 
There is already a trade-off for this. Why the hell are you adding another one? <laughs> Why? Oh my gosh, I'm losing my crap here just thinking about this. It's, it's absolutely fantastic. So, here comes the question of the day. My bots are all basically still perfectly fine. I'm one of the better builders in terms of combat, at least in the West, uh, if not arguably one of the best. And I, that's a fluff title, so I'm just going to say that's an opinion and that's debatable and that's subjective and all these other wonderful things. So if you want to challenge that, go ahead and challenge it. Don't believe it. I don't give a shit. That's not my point here. I have plenty of functional combat machines that can serve mass amounts of kills. I've taken a 2 versus 3 where I'm on Team 2 and racked in kills 6 kills to 0 deaths before using sharp piloting and honestly just a lucky map that was suiting to what my bot did. You know, if that isn't a bot that's successful, I don't know what it is. So if my bots are unaffected and they're arguably some of the higher echelons, I think we can at least say, uh, certainly, of combat effectiveness while still balancing things like cost and moving parts and clarity of operation. Uh, why are these patches being applied? Because when it comes to what really makes combat tick, what makes combat effective or makes a machine effective in combat, they aren't affecting any of the methods. I mean, they're really just kind of adding more to the learning curve at this point. And I would say the most dangerous thing about machine craft is its learning curve. This is the greatest hazard of the game, is that you need to spend a considerable amount of hours to get up to speed. If you want to build your own hardware for combat with limited energy in mind, you will be spending even more hours. But honestly, as long as you put one foot in front of the other, you'll get somewhere where you can be very proud of yourself. That much I am certain of. But if you raise the floor, you could damage the ability of more players to enter the game. Almost all players' first machines use movers. If you were slapping movers in the face, and their machine was already almost guaranteed to be ineffective being a first incarnation of their attempt to fight with a machine, now they have even more problems and they have even more to learn to get anywhere. And most people won't have the patience for that crap and they will just walk away. And most people don't view machine craft as a combat game because of the high threshold of engineering, and because of the high skill ceiling both in piloting and in engineering. But honestly, the depth of the technology, the depth of the building, the depth of everything you piece together and how you use it is what makes this game fantastic in combat, in my opinion. And I know I am the odd man out. I know most people don't look at combat as an applicable process in machine craft. And most people that do play combat usually just cheese the damn thing or play in unlimited energy and call it combat. I would not, personally, but I am a known energy limit elitist because I believe it encourages trade-offs on machines and makes you think even more, which is a better challenge, which is more satisfaction to overcome, and helps keep everything in check when we're talking about the matchups of bots. So, if we're going on to what this is doing, let's only, only pro propose a, a theory here. By nerfing the crap out of speed, by nerfing the crap out of maneuvering, by nerfing the crap out of speed limits, by nerfing the crap out of complex, invisible, non-colliding parts, having other things mounted on them, G2 may be very well attempting, and I cannot say for a fact, this is entirely conjecture, bear in mind, based on my own analyses, uh, that they may be attempting to grow the fan base, or to grow the player base. Because MachineCraft, little, okay, obviously known fact, does not have a particularly large player base. It's, it's known. It's not a very well written game for English translations. It has a high skills floor. Combat isn't really seen around much. Most people just build joke bots, meme bots, and deco bots, and hang out in a uh, chat server, talk with guys, have fun, mess around, uh, play ridiculous memes on the server's uh, movie screen, whatever. So it really is more of a social game, and I understand where that comes from. I, I, I've done that in my time before. You know, a lot of games are just social games, and that kind of is machine craft's essence. But if they're trying to grow the player base to make it comparable to, say, Robocraft or Crossout or any other building-based game where you have engineering trade-offs and parts and customization of your bot or whatever the hell it is, a tank, I don't even know. Uh, but it's more... I don't know, that, that the fact that they have clamped how unfair, and by unfair I mean how diverse matchups can be in terms of skill and engineering and all that, they may be attempting to make the game more user-friendly uh, or more newbie-friendly. But we're talking about the fact that they are now nerfing the crap out of what is almost exclusively newcomer machines. Is that, can that, 
even be said to be their point. And yes, I'm building up a conjecture. Uh, I'm building up conjecture, forming it into a straw man, and then hitting it with a stick based on my own observations that formed it in the first place. But I honestly think that's my take. And if you don't agree with me, I, I get that. But that's what I think they're doing, and that's why I think it's backfiring. And G2 is just rolling out these patches. They're rolling them out at an unprecedented rate, rapidly, quote-unquote, refining combat in a lot of ways. But G2 is not perfect. They don't seem to test their craft thoroughly. I don't think they realize that when you fire rockets at anything that isn't a giant brick of a tank at low energy, the knockback limits the energy and just rolls the bot away from the blast. See, you just toss him around. 40 damage because he fucking bounces around, or 200 at best. And the missiles are also blunt force damage, so they break parts more than they actually cause HP damage. But now if we start looking at mortars, mortars have been broken for God knows how long. Mortars are, oh man, they're just painful to look at. The projectiles are slow, the blast expansion is slow, the damage is low, the energy consumption is high, it has arc to calculate for. Uh, the knockback force throws everything out of its damage radius where it can even damage anything. And anything that is so heavy, it's still kind of in the damage radius, still doesn't give a crap. Because mortars are basically broken. They have been broken for ages. And many people think that bosses that use 64-piece mortars are overpowered. Yes, because they're a boss using a 64-tack single weapon. It's the size of Texas. Yes, it does damage. But because the scaling is almost exponential or logarithmic, or the hell the mathematical comparison is, Small, practical sized mortars for anything less than a boss machine are completely and utterly useless, even after you bump up the damage considerably in a surfer. They just are not practical. And finally, my final piece, uh, beamers. Fuck them. Uh, quite frankly, beamers make no sense in any respect in this game. Attack limit ensures how much firepower a machine can use maximum. Projectile speeds ensure that aiming needs a certain amount of skill. The way that something has accuracy or inaccuracy, from homing missiles straying randomly, to uh, machine guns having stray, shotguns having spread, mortars having uh, an error of margin in their aim, you know, all that. Why do beamers have 100% accuracy? Why do beamers have so much goddamn potential damage relative to their energy output that they in anything above low spec, can produce more damage than any other weapon, hands down. Why do they often have purported uh, claims that when you scale down the damage for beamers in your server, the way that beamers increment falloff damage negates most of the damage scaling? Why do beamers hit things instantly? It's... Ah, uh, it's... Oh, man, I... I'm dying inside. Oh, and they also bypass shields. I think at one point they didn't bypass shields, and then... That may have changed. I could have sworn I was blocking a dude who was using almost entirely low-power beamers using a small shield, but that was about it. So, the question remains, what the hell is going on? There are many things that are in need of dire dressing. G2 is attacking things that don't seem to really be at fault and setting things back in a way that is limiting user freedom. Think about this and start thinking critically. I freaking love this game. I have spent God knows how many, probably several hundred, maybe even a thousand hours is a fair number of game, hours into this game at this point, and I love it. But what G2 is doing it is betraying the core idea behind this game. It is betraying the fact that people play this game because it has freedom, because it has roam, because it has technology you can invent yourself. You can be the guy to invent laser sights or heads up lights in front of your camera or freaking shock absorbers in your shoulders, or aimable chest guns for when your arms get blown off, or skeletal systems to reduce how much damage you take when limbs get blown off. All of these important things you have because of freedom. And that's what makes Machinecraft great. That's what makes Machinecraft unlike any other experience out there, and that's why nobody or nobody who really appreciates and understands this game really walks away from this game. Because if they walk over to another game, they're going to be getting a dumbed down less personalized, less customizable version of this game's building system. Maybe some people prefer that and they consider the trade-offs worth it, but if you were here for the building system, you stay for the building system in the unprecedented freedom and thinking and intellectual might you can flex. It is a brilliant marvel of engineering of what this game has accomplished in its development cycle, 
and G2 is rapidly endangering tearing the whole goddamn thing down. Currently, I'm fine. I don't know how long I'm going to be fine. I'm not going to bullshit you. Uh, everything that's making my bond stable right now might just fly out the window in the next couple of weeks. We'll see. I'm not particularly scared because I'm a clever guy and I can think around these problems, but for a lot of the community, and a lot of people who don't want to build seriously having all these restrictions and random nerfs slapped on them will limit how much they enjoy the game. It will limit how much they enjoy building in the game. I know a guy who is currently borderline boycotting the game subconsciously because he does not like what they're doing. He has an invisible core. If the core is invisible, it vibrates into his body. If the core is invisible, it is now an invisible body that is the core, and it will combust randomly and blow up his entire bot. He has to do a lot of work to fix a problem that arguably didn't even exist. So, we're looking at this cross-eyed, I would like to think. Uh, we are scrutinizing this painfully close to an almost comical degree. I would like to think that's where we are right now, because G2 is making some very questionable changes, and if they keep this up, they may just kill this game and everything it ever stood for. This has been my absolute fluff-tacular rant for the day, and I hope you have a nice one. WCCC, signing out.